Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. entitled Americans on Horseback and is a gay romance about a unit that is probably the last remnant of the United States Cavalry, the horse platoon of the 759th Military Police Battalion stationed in Berlin. One of its members is from Texas and is in love, a dangerous combination. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, attention high school graduates. Get on the freedom team today by volunteering for enlistment in the United States Army. You can help America save the peace and save freedom, too, by enlisting today. Full details at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Americans on Horseback. Magnificent display, single colonel. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, we're proud of this unit here in Berlin. As a student of horsemanship myself, I would say you have every right to be. <laughs> you know, Mr. Ambassador, you've just looked at the last lineal descendant of Bill Sheridan's cavalry. There is no cavalry in your army? A modern weapon to make the horse as obsolete as a muzzle-loading rifle. Oh, that is a shame. The horse is an animal of such fire, such emotion. In my country, the mounted guard of honor which surrounds El Presidente is a sight which makes strong men to weak. Well, we don't require such emotionalism from our countrymen. Here in Berlin, it's another matter. With such large political issues at stake, a mounted unit like this one gives weight and color and dignity to the large number of functions and ceremonies required of I see. I'm sorry to say, part of the citizenry is impressed by that sort of thing, as opposed to the very real aspect of political and economic freedom. Oh, you are very right, senor. And I am most grateful to you and your country for giving me the opportunity of seeing these things. <laughs> well, if you have any time, why don't you drop into my office tomorrow? We'll go out and take a look at this mounted unit. You might enjoy that. Oh, senor, you have read my mind. There is nothing I would enjoy more. Oh, go right in, Mr. Ambassador. The Colonel's expecting you. Gracias, senorita. You are most kind. Ah, senor Colonel. It's good to see you again. Well, I'm glad you were able to come, sir. Oh, Carol, would you come in here, please? Yes, sir. My secretary, Miss Logan. Carol, this is Ambassador Garcia. My pleasure, senorita. Well, I'm stuck here with some work, but I think Carol would like to take you over. Hmm. She's uh, from Texas. <laughs> there are a lot of people from Texas, Colonel, and not all of them horse people. Uh, then you share my enthusiasm for the equine species. If you mean the horse, I sure do. Then as a guide, you will not only be an illuminating one, but an authoritative one, huh? Well, I've been riding since I was old enough to walk, and I sure am fond of horses, if that's what you need. Well, then fine. Let us be off to the horses. <laughs> Here they come. Ah, oh, they make a glorious picture, don't they? Oh, I can't think of another side to equal it. Set maybe a roundup about the same time of the afternoon. This man. Next formation is 0700 tomorrow. You'll see that your mouth get curved and fed. This man. Howdy, 
Miss Carroll. Well, what brings you around these parts, Anita? I am. I'm on a semi-official mission today. Ambassador Garcia, this is Sergeant Wallace of the horse platoon of the 759th Military Police Battalion. Well, I'm mighty pleased to know you, sir. Any pleasure is mine, sir. The ambassador's doing a quick tour of the whole occupation area. Oh? He saw the plague yesterday and wanted to see the horses. Well, we got some mighty fine animals around here. Uh-oh. Easy, Rusty. You want to go over and say hello to Miss Carroll? Hi, Rusty. Oh, you don't think I'd forget my baby, do you? It is right in my purse. Now, you just take it easy there. You know I had to go all the way into town to find lump sugar for you? You big baby. Now, go ahead. You can have it. No, he does. It's amazing. I take my hat off to you. I think that horse is right off the panhandle away. He's taking Miss Carroll here. He sure has got himself away with these animals. Oh, he's a beautiful horse. I'm madly in love with him. In my country, senorita, a woman may lavish affection on such a beautiful animal, but there are limits on the feelings one may have for a horse. Those mighty smart words, sir. I wouldn't be so sure about that. There's many a horse that has a lot more to recommend him than many a man. Miss Carroll, you know, I met a lot of nice horses in my time, but I ain't never met one that was much good at a kissing bee. <laughs> you excuse me, I better be fed and rusted down for the night. Good afternoon, Miss Carroll. Miss Ambassador. Oh, you know? Well, I never. Senorita, you know, I think he is right. He's like all the rest of the men down home, a pig-headed fool. I must say that you have the most extraordinary attitude for a young woman. Have you never considered marriage? Oh, sure, but I must say I do well without it. You hear some people talk, you think marriage and men were the only things in the world. Senorita, well, it is amazing. A pretty young girl like yourself with such a distorted outlook on life. Mr. Ambassador, I think we better be getting back to the office. I got some locking up to do before I go home. Uh, very well. <laughs> Now, Rusty, old boy, we have the old nose bag on in a minute. <laughs> I got some German hops in it for you. Oh, you like that, huh, boy? <coughs> uh, oh. Single sergeant. Howdy, Miss Ambassador. I thought you'd have gone on back Miss Carol by now. I decided to let her return alone so I could come here and talk with you. Well, you just go on ahead and jaw, so I got the rest of the day off. Take it to admiring Rusty here. That's not the only reason I came I am worried about you and Miss Carroll. Me? I think that you are in love with her. Aren't you presuming an awful lot in just one little old conversation? Oh, I could tell from your eyes the way that you look at her. You are what they call in the Western movies the, the strong, silent type. But your eyes, Senor Tex, they become like butter when you look at Miss Carroll. <laughs> I didn't think it showed good, so you do admit it, huh? And now we must think of action. A strong, silent type cannot be buried with his boots on when there is such an attractive young lady around. Huh? Wait a minute, this kind of ridiculous. I can no, go no, right... no, no, my friend. You need an experienced hand. You are a soldier, wise in the ways of war. I am a diplomat, knowing the more subtle ways. Now, what do you know of Miss Carroll, her routine, her habits? Uh, well, not too much, except she's fond of Rusty here. Well, we know of her fondness for the equine species. Can you be more specific? Well, I know she goes riding on the weekend. See, there's some bridle pads in the Grooney Wall over in the British sector. Uh-huh. I've gone along with her there a couple of times. That's about all. And most of the time, she just stays in the quarter. She, she never goes out to dances, to, to parties, to the movies? No, I don't think so. Caramba. This is worse than I thought. We must act. And act immediately. <laughs> Oh, Miss Logan, there's no reason to finish those things tonight. Why don't you go on home? That's all right, sir. I have no place to go. Miss Logan, that's an order. Now stop and go home. Yes, sir. You know, I just can't understand you, Miss Logan. I think under ordinary circumstances, a pretty thing like you would find living in Berlin the next thing to paradise. The ambassador, he uh, got off all right? Yes, he did. He saw everything he wanted to see. Yes, he did. All right, then. You can go along. Miss Logan, I didn't offend you, did I? No, sir, but I do wish people would stop. My personal affairs are not in order of business on this post. I don't date, and I think I have a right to my own feelings. 
I'm sorry, Miss Logan. I guess you do have that round. Well, why can't people leave me alone, then? <clears throat> there are many civilizations that have popped their heads up for short periods in our long history. But the keynote to every successful one has been a society that contained both men and women. <laughs> Good night, Miss Logan. Good night, sir. Howdy, Miss Carroll. Hello, Sergeant. Hey, mind if I walk along a little bit with you? This is Army property, and I don't see how I could possibly stop anybody from using it. <laughs> Miss Carroll, I hope you're not mad at me for saying what I said about the kissing being all. You are, I apologize. Why can't people leave well enough alone? The same way back in Texas. Now, Carol, you keep your hair nice and pretty if you ever want to get a man. Get a man? Who wants a man? Carol, I am sorry. Yes, I don't know what, I, what I'd do without you. You're the only one around here who makes even a shade of sense. Hey, you're not mad at me? How could I be mad at you? You're almost like kinfolk to me. <laughs> yeah. I guess it is kind of strange, two people from Texas meeting here in Germany. Mm-hmm. It is kind of funny. Yeah, it's almost like Satan. Almost. Miss Carroll, they're having a dance over at the rec hall this coming Saturday. Would you like to do me the honor Oh, to... Tex, don't be silly. I know you don't like dancing any more than I do. I got a much better idea. They've opened up some new trails in the Grunewald on the other side of the Olympic Stadium, British section. Yeah. Why don't we go riding on Saturday? Miss Carroll, I guess that'll be fine. Yes. Don't you know? Well, you see, I, I have to see a man first and change some plans, and if he can, then I guess that'll be all right. Sounds very complicated. Oh, no, it's not. I see, I just want to make sure that Rusty is all right so you could ride him. Tex, do you think I could? Well, he's got to be exercised. I don't see why not. Oh, Tex, you Well, I think you're wonderful. See you Saturday. Yeah, see you on Saturday. <laughs> Texas, it's a beautiful morning. Rusty here is just wonderful. Couldn't be any more perfect. I agree with you, Miss Carroll. Really a talker. Ah, come on, Tex. I'll race you down the bend in the path. Come on. Tex, I can't believe it. We could be millions of miles away from Berlin. Yeah, it's pretty wonderful, isn't it? Oh. I sometimes just sit back and think how lucky I am. Army sure take me a long way from Texas. You know, this was a royal hunting preserve way before there was a western section and an eastern section. Yeah, there's supposedly over 11,000 acres to this Bruny Wall. Almost as big as some of those ranches down home. Um, what's that big grandstand over there? Is that part of the Olympic village? That, no, I think that's the Rulaben. It's the racetrack. Oh, horses? Sure. I think the season's over now, but we could ride and take... Horse! What? <gasps> What's going on here? You will dismount and put your hands above your head. Sound this mail. This gun will shoot. You better do like you said. Now you will empty your pockets into this handkerchief. Quickly. That's my whole week's salary. I just cashed my check. All right, now turn around and walk over to the trees. Now you will wait one minute. Then do as you please. There he goes. He took Rusty. Well, look here, I'm going after him. You just stay here. I'm not back in five minutes. Head back down the path and see if you can find the police. Oh, Tex, be careful. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Americans on Horseback. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school seniors, here's an important message for you. The United States Army's Reserve for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top-notch training, on-the-job experience, while serving side-by-side -side with America's finest young men. The choice is wide open, and it's yours to make. High school graduates can choose from more than 100 interesting career courses that range from atomic technician through welding. A fact-filled booklet called Reserve for You tells you about the entire program. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of 
reserved for you by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Americans on Horseback. And that's the story, sir. It, it was my fault. I prompted the whole thing. A woman without love. Well, we well, never, we never thought the man had acted. See? Well, I had no idea. Oh, Mr. Ambassador, I'd think your country would frown on the rather spurious activity that you've been indulging in here. Senor Colonel, I have no more country. The word has just come that El Presidente has uh, flown the coop, and my party is now out of favor. Well, you've both gotten yourselves into a mess. Sergeant, I intend to see that there is disciplinary action in this case. I realize that. Well, then, let's see if I have the facts straight. The two of you rigged this robbery in the hope that Tex here could win favor in Miss Logan's eyes and the phony robber turned out to be a real one. Uh, you, you have forgotten the most important thing, senor. The attitude of this young lady. The, the strange attitude. Well, I'm now beginning to have my doubts as to just how strange it was. After looking at the two of you and hearing about this, this rather bizarre affair. Senor, you will do something. See, it's rusty more than anything. I don't mind the money. Oh, you don't, do you? Well, I'm certain that Miss Logan does. Has anyone bothered to tell her what happened? No, sir. Well, I recommend that to be the first course of action. And I'll see that a report goes out to the German police on this. I don't think we'll have any trouble picking up this man. It'd be rather difficult hiding a sorrow-colored horse in Berlin. Oh, yes, and while you're at it, gentlemen... I suggest that you reimburse Miss Logan for the week's loss of pay she suffered at your hands. Now, good day. And, uh, then what did she say? Well, it's right about then that she threw the inkwell at me. Well... The eye doesn't look too badly, but uh, I think you will have, um, uh, how do you say, a shiner. Oh, that's the least of my worries. She wouldn't even take the money back. No, no, not a bit. If anything, I think we made things worse. All she kept talking about is Rusty, and what did we do to him? We didn't do anything. The guy just walked off with it. You will excuse me for being such a bungling fool. Hey, what was it you told the colonel about finding this guy? But the inspiration came to me as I was watching the harness races at Mariendorf. I thought that I could stage a horse opera like the American movies do, and then you would rescue Miss Carroll, and she would fall into your arms for the big clinch. Yeah. This guy. How would you find this guy? Well, I felt we would need somebody who could ride a horse, so I asked one of the stable boys if he would oblige. Well, you sure picked a good one. No, oh, that I did say not this. That I did. Well, I ain't gonna do no good crying over spilled milk. Are you up to trying to find him? Of course. But I think it will not be as easy as the colonel says. The racing season is over here in Berlin, even the harness races at Mariendorf. Yeah, but there just aren't that many horses in Germany. They had a heck of time starting our horse platoon. The filet of a horse is a very succulent dish when someone is hungry. Wait a minute. I got it. You, you have what? Come on, let's get up here at the corner and see if we can find a horse and buggy. Well, this is no time to go sightseeing. Now, listen. If we can find one of these guys, we'll see a lot more than the city of Berlin. So come on. Please. Uh, but uh, please, uh, please, you're not so fast. I, I'm not as young as I once was. Hey, look here. We're in luck. Here comes one. He's unoccupied. Hey, you there, driver. Hey, hold, hold, my hair. Uh, how good he's stopping. Well, why is he carrying the same thing? You speak. Come on here. Good nothing, my hair. Yeah, now, do you speak English? Yeah, yeah, my hair. I'm safe, eh? Uh, good. Can you tell me where you get your horse's shoes? Ich kann nicht verstehen, was Sie haben gesagt. Yeah, we're doing great. Now, look here. Your horse. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, my All right, horse. your horse, the horse. It's shoes. You see here? His shoes here. <laughs> Look at it. The horse, friend, the horse needs new shoes every once in a while. You see? Shoes, you see? Bang, bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. Yeah, yeah, I'm a smith. A smith. Now I understand. Of course, right uh, right off uh, Spandau Strasse by uh, Charlottenburg. Oh, that's good. Now, can you take it there? Uh, uh, of course, of course. Uh, get on. Uh, senor, could you please uh, tell me what is on your mind? Well, it's very simple. See, when Miss Carroll and I were riding this morning, I noticed that Rusty's rear shoe was loose. Huh? If he gets ridden much longer, he's going to come up lame and need a new shoe. Ah, 
now I understand. And if there aren't many horses in Berlin, there certainly won't be an overabundance of blacksmiths, huh? You are uh, interested in horses, my hell? No, not horses, my friend. Just a horse. <laughs> Well, uh, he was able to help you? Nah, not much. We've seen here in a hide of rust. That is strange. If the horse is to be shot, as you say, then there is no other place he can go. Wait, you, you, you say this is a big red-colored horse. A beautiful animal. The stable, I keep my horse, and it seems to me now that uh, such an animal was there just as I came out at noon. That could be possible. How far away from there right now? Oh, about ten minutes' drive. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Oh, oh, there. Uh, right in here, my hair. Yeah. Hey, there he is. That's Rusty. What? He looks fine, Senor Burke. He seems totally unharmed. See, there, look at that. His shoe's just a little loose. See, see. Miss Carroll is going to certainly be pleased when I bring him back. And maybe then we can accomplish our mission. Yeah, I think maybe I had just about enough of mission. Senor. Why in the hell, perhaps it would be wise if I were to go and find the manager here and, and tell him about your item. And also ask him about the guy that brought him in here. You want me to go with him? Uh, no, it, it means nothing to him. He, he speaks no English. All right. <laughs> Strange place, eh? Yeah. I thought you said there were not many horses in Berlin. This place is full of them. Yeah. Oh, there's something funny about this place. He put my finger on it. You are right. I I feel it too. Yeah, as long as we get rusty back, that's all I was worried about. Did you notice the building in the back of the stable? Yeah, it looked kind of like a factory, didn't it? Yes. Hey, wait a minute just a second. Yeah, here comes the driver back. I'm terribly sorry. The manager is being very difficult. He, he said he has bought the horse from uh, someone that he did not know. Well, he can't do that. There's an army brand. Here, you take a look at that. We could have the police here in ten minutes. Oh, no, 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 no. All this is not necessary. I think the only thing you want is his money back. Just a few American dollars for his services, uh, for the trouble he was involved in. Uh, I think $50. Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars? That's ridiculous. Look, Senor Tex, I can advance you the money. Then we can return Rusty and the, the whole business will be for me. Oh, I'll be darned if I will. It's here. It's my horse. I'm not going to pay any money for my own horse. Where is this man? I would not make any trouble, my friend. Oh, wait a minute. I get it. Senor, what was it you said before you know about this fillet of horse? I said that the fillet of a horse is a very succulent dish when someone is hungry. That's it for sure. I'm a monkey's uncle. Hey, driver. You got blood on your shoes. That's a slaughterhouse in the back of this barn. I missed my guess. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, let's go. I'm going to have a look. All right, stand where you are. Put your hands above your head. Well, well, well. I'm coming from the park. I do not need your American jokes. Keep your hands up. Carl, you are a fool for bringing them here. Well, I only thought the money would be worth more than the stupid animals. And so you endanger our entire operation here for measly $50. I'm sorry, Hans. Sorry. This is no time to be sorry. There are some ropes at the barn. Get them quickly. Well, you have really bungled into something, haven't you? I still don't get this. There's enough to meet in the western sector. Why the horse meat? Your sex, I would not be too sure that it is for the western sector. There is a very definite shortage of meat behind the Iron Curtain. Oh, I get it. Not only a shortage of meat, but a shortage of animals for meat. So the comrades get the prime cuts and the people get the horse meat. Carl, hurry with the rope! I don't think you're going to need any rope, Uh, friend. uh, 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 Are you here? I'm doing very well, single thing. I have the gun. Caramba! You have given him the knock off. Yeah, where'd the other one go? Uh, I think he must have flown. Now, wait a minute. Stop. Keep that gun pointed at the door. All right, hombre. Stick him up. Holy mackerel, it's you. I might have known it. Senor Curtin. You got the other one, sir? Yes, we have the whole gang in tow. Well, you know about the horse meat. We've known about it for some time. We just needed a definitive piece of evidence. And Rusty here was able to supply that. I'll be done. Incidentally, Sergeant, good work. But don't think that I've forgotten about the mess you've gotten yourself into. When you get back to the post, you can consider yourself confined to quarters. And as for you... Please? I'd suggest that you report to our State Department representative here 
Check your diplomatic passport before I report you for abuse of privilege. But certainly. What of Miss Logan? But I'd say that's for her. is running into you here on my first day back in Berlin. Senor. This is a coincidence. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I'd have swore you'd been dead long since. Oh, I would never have thought to come back to Berlin. But I am here this time on a business of business. Yes. I am on a trade mission. You going to try and stay out of trouble this time, Oregon? Senor, since the last time, I have even given up horseback riding. Oh. And what's more, this time I have brought my wife with me. She is a very sensible woman. <laughs> oh, by the way, senor, uh, whatever happened to that charming country woman of yours with such a strange attitude towards men? Oh, ask her yourself. Here she comes now. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Ambassador. Isn't this a strange yes, world? I'm, I'm no longer Mr. Ambassador, senorita, but I agree. It is a strange world. <laughs> Tex and I want to thank you for what you did. Me? What I did? But I caused nothing but trouble. I wouldn't say that. You were directly responsible for this. Really? You're married. <laughs> yes, sir. I got all rope and tied. <laughs> Maybe go. Senora, uh, may I kiss the bride? Oh, of course. <laughs> but how, how? How did it happen? You were such a confirmed, uh, say, uh, the word, uh, a spinster. Oh, it's a simple. Yeah, I just told Russ how I felt. Russ is old Carol here. Mm-hmm. They talking to horse? Why not? The army has everything else. <laughs> You know, in the two years that I've been announcing radio and TV shows for the Army Recruiting Service, I've had an awful lot of guys come up to me after a broadcast and say something like, what a deal you have for yourself in the Army. How did you get a job like that? And I can only tell them that in civilian life, I was a radio and TV announcer. When I enlisted in the Army, they put me to work immediately in the same kind of a job, which sort of helps me to put over the point that when you volunteer for service in the United States Army, you can rest assured that your best sense and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Take a tip from me and visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station to get all the facts. Believe me, you often like did. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>